And so Jesus was the only one, and is the only one, that can reveal God's character. No, nobody else can do it. And now your host, Pastor Robert Scale. Welcome again to Jesus' is Answer Ministry broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales, and I tell you, saints, I've been teaching you all the word, understanding your body. And um, I know that many of you all are going to order these CDs, especially part two. Both of them are excellent, and you really need both of them. Um, you know, we got to understand something, and I want to finish this today. The body is not saved. It's a godless human nature. God wants us to rule with his life, our bodies. Listen at Galatians 5, 16. This, your spirit, soul, and body, you are a spirit being. You have a soul, your will, your emotion, personality, your behavior, your learned behaviors, and you live in that body. Now, your spirit gets saved when you accept Jesus. Your soul is only saved, James 1, 21, as you receive the word of God with meekness and, and, and you do the word. Your soul gets saved in practicing, hearing and practicing the word of God, following Jesus, obeying Jesus. And then your body has to be put under where the life of Christ is living through it and not you. So in Galatians 5, 16, let's pick it up where we've been at all week and finish these works of the flesh. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, many times people, they don't teach people what walking in the spirit means. Loving God with your heart, soul, and mind and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself ain't walking in the spirit. Them laws and prophets. Trying to do something from God for God is not walking in the spirit. Believing in the Lord Jesus, trusting and relying who he is, what he did, how he won the victory, how he overcame sin, how he was tempted yet without sin. You trust him to show you and empower you to do the same thing. So walking in the spirit is allowing the Lord Jesus to control you by the spirit that lives in you. The new commandment uh, in John 15, 12, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I love you. That commandment, if you live that by believing in Jesus and don't flesh that commandment by trying to do it in your strength, that's how you walk in the spirit. By believing in how Jesus loved you and living that love toward others which shows you love him. That shows you love him when you keep his commandments. It shows you love him. You, you don't get to love him first and then show something. You live something and that shows that you love him. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, this flesh is a godless human nature. And I tell you, 90 something percent of believers all over the world live in this flesh. And then you have a few that, that really done, really matured. And uh, you can tell a lot of times, if I get around you, I can tell how fleshly you are by the way you talk, the way you act. When you're spiritual minded, you thinking about things above, your mind's on Jesus, the Word, the Holy Spirit, the things that gratify the Holy Spirit, and, and, and by Him controlling you. When you're in the mind of the flesh, you're controlled by its unholy desires. Now we picked off that, left off at envy. Envy is a deeply feel, felt grudge because someone possesses something you wish you had. Um, because the person has a chip on their shoulder, he begrudges what that person possesses and is coveted of the person's belongings, accomplishments, relationships, or titles in life. That's why you got a lot of people want to be called pastor, 
want to be, and they ain't no more no pastor. They ought to be a deacon or usher in church. And they up here want to be a pastor, want, want to be lifted up. They in envy too. Yeah, I'm apostle so and so. You don't even, you ain't even built no churches. No, you just in envy. Uh, the chief priests had envy bad against Jesus, uh, and they couldn't praise the Lord, but Jesus was gaining ground on them. So they wanted to get rid of him, get rid of the competition. The chief priest therefore decided to kill Jesus. Now I heard a lady that came to our church uh, uh, a week or so ago. She said she been she been wanting to come there. Something's been telling her to come there. And she said all the churches and people in the community done told her that our church was a cult. That's their flesh. Their envy. Our building debt free. We got love, 67% of people that are white, blacks, and, it's, and, and everybody believes they're Christians, not black and white, Afro-American. I ain't no more no Afro-American than you are, Billy Goat. Jesus made me a son of God. And I don't have faith in my flesh. I don't have faith in what you taught me growing up. I just flat don't do it. See, I'm not in the flesh. And the flesh are sad with this little group. Yeah, let's stick together. No, I'm going to stick with Jesus. And then if you form a group with Jesus, like Martin Luther King did, who prayed and trust God and did it with peace and not with violence. Huh. That's why his name on everything. Go in every city, you need Martin Luther King Boulevard. You can't kill love. Boy, you can't kill love. And people, have you ever witnessed, witnessed a moment when a fellow employee or believer tried to struggle, snuggle up close to you? Found out later in reality they didn't want to do nothing. They didn't want to be your friend. They just wanted to be close so they could be freeing someone you knew. Mm. In order to get that other person, they had to go through you. So they acted like your friend in order to get uh, their own advantage, to gain their own advantage, and then dropped you like a lead balloon. Or perhaps someone acted as if they wanted to be your friend. In all truth, they want all they wanted was your job. This goes on in the secular world all the time, but it should not happen in the church. Such behavior is hurtful, manipulative, and unkind. It wounds souls, makes people feel like they've been abused, and it cheapens the concept of God's love in Jesus. Wow. The next one is drunkenness. Drunkenness is strong drink. Listen, saints, don't drink. Now, I know that drinking wine ain't a sin. But I ain't finna drink because I will not leave an example for other people to follow. And really in America, if, if you drink wine and you're a Christian, you should not tell nobody. You should hold it between you and God. Where is that in the Bible, Pastor? In Romans 14. You should not do nothing that will cause your brother to stumble. Listen. Even, even what you eat. It is good in verse 21 of Romans 14. It's good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. He, you end up being an alcoholic, and you see me a preacher drinking. Or a Christian drinking. Have thou faith? Well, have it. If you have faith to drink wine, I don't. Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that, that condemneth not himself in the thing which he allowed. And if and he that doubteth is damned, if he eat because he eateth not of faith, whatever's not of faith is sin. Whatever can't trust Jesus is sin. You're not gonna sit at no table with me and, and drink no no gelato or colado, whatever you call them. I don't even know how to talk like that no more. You, you, you're not going to do that. 
You're not going to set no example that people think it's all right. And so this is a work of the flesh. And so a drunken state suppresses the man's ability to think correctly, releases the flesh to, to fully express itself. This undisciplined consumption of wine only leads to the work of flesh in the store. Amen. The last one is reveling. Revelings describes the flesh as a uh, parade or merrymaking. You ever seen people, they just act like they just so happy all the time. And sometimes this ain't the Holy Spirit. Most who see the word reveling's image it means drunkenness, street fights, or those who run from one drunken party to the next. But reveling really describes a person who can't bear the thought of boredom and is therefore continually seeking different forms of amusement and entertainment. They go from group to group trying to get a feeling, trying to find some kind of entertainment instead of having fellowship one with another. This person is, is usually afraid of being bored, or, so they consistently contemplate what they can do next to have fun or be entertained. This person endlessly eats at parties or seeks constant laughter. I mean, they just they just constantly seeking some kind of laughter or funny. This is a work of the flesh. This ain't the Holy Spirit. And um in 2 Timothy 3, 4, Paul prophesied this kind of self-gratification would be especially prevalent, a prevalent problem in the last days. He wrote that in the last days, people would be lovers of pleasure than lovers of God. And so uh, this also something that, that tastes sweet or something that is pleasant or enjoyable, something that will keep you from coming to church. You love to go fishing and you don't go to church because you like to go fishing on Sunday. Hmm. Also, this is um, unrestrained seeking of carnal pleasures. The flesh wants to escape the responsibility to thrive on fun and avoid the seriousness of life. Hmm. You know anybody like that? Well, they're in the works of the flesh. Now, the Apostle Paul ended this verse in Galatians 5, 19 and 20 and 21. He ended this with these words. And I want to close today before I get ready to pray with you. Listen to this in verse 21. Envy, murders, drunkenness, uh, revelings, murderers. Oh, we left that out. God don't want us murdering. There are two kind of ways you can murder somebody. One is sticking a knife in them and killing them. But another way is your words can murder people. And the Bible teaches us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, we know we pass from death unto life because we love the brother. Now listen to verse uh, 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. You just, when you want to kill somebody, saints, you're not saved. This is a work of the flesh. You are not born again. You don't have eternal life abiding in you when you can say, I want to kill somebody. You don't have eternal life in you. You need to get saved today. Now, the Bible said, Paul said, I told you in time past, they which do such things. Any of these works of the flesh I've taught this week, I went over every one of them, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, here, here, here's, here's the problem. They're trying to get blessings from God. They prophesying that God going to just bless you and you got all this in your life. But the Bible, the Bible says you're not going to inherit God's rule. 
And that's why your life gonna be so uncontrollable. And, and you just, you're gonna have drama. And now we already gonna go through enough without that. Um, Jesus said in the world, we'll have tests and trials. Our tests and trials mostly should come from us living for Jesus. Or they should come from us not knowing something and then we trust Jesus. He teaches now we know that and we don't walk in that anymore. But most of the people, Christians in church, go through tests and trials. It's because of, of how they're living wrong. They're walking in the flesh, in the works of the flesh. God, the word kingdom here in the Greek means God's rule in the believer on earth. And you go down. Let me read verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness. I'm sorry. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Against these there is no love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with your heart, soul, and mind. Strength. They not in that. There's no laws with these. These are God's nature. And they that are Christ, now get this revelation here. They that are Christ, this is how you crucify, how you do. A lot of times you hear people say, put to death, they say crucify, but they don't tell you how. Well, I'm going to tell you how. When you allow Jesus Christ to rule you, dominate you you yield to jesus and his lordship you 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 look to jesus to change you see where you don't live your old man but you live the new man and the way you do this is you put off that old man by by, by acknowledging jesus lordship over you that you're going to serve and follow jesus and you have to do this every day the more you acknowledge Jesus' lordship over you, the more control and the more Jesus will do by his spirit in your life. It's about the Holy Spirit, us walking in the spirit, not trying to make the flesh stop. That stuff will just lay dormant and rise up again. One of the revelations that Jesus has taught me is this. Is Christians have to go past the cross. We got to live in the cross every day. We must live in how God loved us and forgave us so we'll know how to judge and love and forgive others. That's the cross. It ain't nowhere else you're going to get that but the cross. But what happens is, is many Christians, they, they see they're wrong. They ask Jesus to forgive them. But you keep doing it because you have to have faith. God raised Jesus from the dead. And the reason people don't understand the cross will show you how to live in the power of his love. But the resurrection will bring you out of what's wrong to live in that love. And so when you belong to Jesus, not only do you do you need to believe in how he loved you. But you need to believe that Jesus has all power in heaven and earth to raise you up out of anything that's wrong. Now, you see this in Jude, where in Jude, uh, the, the apostle wrote this. Uh, in verse 21, keep yourself in the love of God. See, that's that's believing in how Jesus loved you on the cross. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. See, when you keep yourself in the love of God, you better have your eyes on Jesus looking for his mercy to show you how to walk in this eternal life by the Holy Spirit. And it says that. And then you go down to verse 24. Now under him that's able to keep you from falling. And to and, and, and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. This is when you live in the cross. 
and you live in the power of the resurrection. The apostle Paul said in, in Philippians chapter 2 verse 7, what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things and count them but waste, that I may win Christ and be found in Jesus, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him. I may know him. I no, Not that I will love him, but I know him. Because if you ever get to know him and the power of his resurrection, you go love him. That I may know him, know his love, know the love of Christ. That's why I pray that after every broadcast, to know the love of Christ and be, and the power of his resurrection. Because the power of his resurrection brings you up out of how he loved you. So you need to believe in both of them. And when you become Jesus, says in Galatians 5, 24, you crucified the flesh you put it to death with the affections and the lust. And so I, I began, Jesus set me free from lust for women. How did he do that, Pastor Gibbs? I, I trusted Jesus to change me where I would never lust for women no more. And then I went around and started telling everybody, Jesus set me free from lust. Jesus set me free from drugs. Jesus set me free. I've never been back to none of them. Never been back, not one time. Jesus set me free. What are you doing? Crucifying my flesh. What are you telling me? I'm trusting in Jesus that the life in him is living through me and that what my flesh used to do, it can't do no more. See, I'm crucified my flesh because I belong to Jesus. I'm testifying about him. I'm glorifying him. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, saints, God don't want us trusting in our flesh, putting confidence in our flesh. Paul said, I could do it more than any of y'all in Philippians 2. Man, I was a, a, a tribe of Benjamin. I, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I, I could have rejoiced greatly in the flesh. Oh, that's the flesh. The tribe of Israel is the flesh. No, well, that's the Holy Spirit. No, well, that's how you grew up is the Spirit. What your name is, that's not the Spirit. You shouldn't have confidence in that. In your race, in your flesh. That's the flesh. That's the flesh. That's not the spirit. I want to pray with you today. Come to Jesus. Convert to Christianity. Give your life to him today. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the true son of God. God sent you on this earth to show me his love. I believe in my heart. When Jesus died on the cross, he took all my sins away. And on the third day, I believe in my heart. God's mighty power raised Jesus from the dead. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me and change me and give me eternal life. I repent of my sin. I renounce my wicked ways. I turn from darkness to light. I turn from the power of Satan. I turn to you, God, to follow you, to trust Jesus. Now I believe my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you begin to pray this every day. Lord Jesus, keep me. Help me from not going back. He's able to keep you from falling. From going back to any area you ever used to do. Jesus is able. Woo! Glory to He's able. He's able. He's done it in my life. Woo! I'm so glad. Oh, I'm just so happy. He's done it in my life and I want to see him do it in yours. He's able. You got to believe in him. And trust in him. I want to pray with y'all today. For sickness and to be healed. He's able to heal you. Able to deliver you from bondages and addictions. From pornography and internet. He's able to get idols out of your life. Father, I thank you. I pray for all those. Point your hand to the screen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I rebuke that sickness and disease. I curse every symptom 
coming against your body. I command that disease to loose you in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. Them tumors are disappearing. Those growths are being removed and cast into the sea. Lord Jesus, thank you for delivering those addicts, those in addictions, those that have sexual addictions. Teach them, Father, to repent and help them, Holy Spirit. Teach them to look to Jesus, to never come back to those areas again. And I thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Now listen, I want to invite y'all to Jesus as a church. Saints, if you get in a good church, get around new friends, get around people that really love the Lord, really keep Jesus' commandments. I'm telling you, that will rub off on you and influence you. If you stay around the people you always around, they're going to knock this off of you. So I want to invite you to Jesus Answer Church. Call that number on the screen, 615-641-3505, and punch number one to get directions to the church, a church that's alive. It's worth the drive. I want you to come. You, you need to learn about Jesus, and I will teach you. You'll grow. I'm telling you, I need to get you when you first start in this. So religion don't catch you and mess you all up. Also, I want to make available to you this six CD series for all you out there that really have been blessed by this the last couple of weeks. I, I, I'll, I'll give you both of them, part one and two, for, for $50. A love gift of $50 helps my ministry. And if you buy them separately, they're $30. For a love gift of $30, make your checks and money orders payable to Jesus as the answer ministries. Post office box 292112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And I, I just want you all to know that uh, I poured my heart and all that the Lord taught me into this. And I know you will never be the same getting these. Amen. They have really helped you to understand how to crucify your flesh. Well, my time is up. I want to thank my, my friends, my partners. Thank you, saints. If you really watch this broadcast, you know how important it is to get this kind of word out. So thank you for helping me praying. I need true partners that see the need of getting this message out to the body of Christ and to the world. Amen. Well, my time is up. My prayer for you, saints, is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus, his answer ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember that. Jesus' commandment was, as I loved you on the cross, go live his love toward others. Have a blessed day in Jesus. We'll look forward to seeing you this weekend. Come to church and be blessed in Jesus. Bye-bye. <laughs>